I'm Errol Barnett at the CBS Broadcast Center here in New York. We are continuing to follow this breaking news still coming into our newsroom at this moment. All four international border crossings between the U.S. and Canada in western New York have been closed in both directions. Right now, police are investigating a crash and fire at the Rainbow Bridge in Niagara Falls. That bridge located about less than a mile from the famous waterfalls. Now, federal officials are investigating the situation. We have just learned that two people inside the vehicle are dead. And according to our sources, it appears that this was a deliberate act. Witnesses at the scene say the car was swerving erratically near a border checkpoint. That car coming from Canada and heading toward the United States. New York Governor Kathy Hochul says local, state and federal officials are investigating this. Officials are increasing security in the area as well. Cars going to Buffalo Airport, for example. Right now, they're undergoing additional security checks. Travelers can expect additional screenings there in the region. Charles Marino joins us now. He's a former Homeland Security Department advisor and former special service uh, special agent. What do you make of this incident? Acknowledging that it's just happened and there's a lot we don't know, but from what we do know, um, what is your view? Well, Errol, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be a little cautious here uh, as the Joint Terrorism Task Force run by the FBI is out there investigating and gathering more details. Here's what we do know. We do know that we are at an elevated threat environment. We heard that last week from the FBI director. The United States faces more threats from more places than at any time in our history. This is a fact. You, we also have to mention that we have had a very hard time uh, in this country controlling our borders. Uh, the numbers reflect that fact. Uh, we don't know exactly who's been entering the country or attempting to enter the country. So that's problematic. And then finally, uh, the type of attack that uh, possibly occurred here, if in fact intentional. Vehicle-borne improvised explosive devices are a tactic uh, adapted by terrorist organizations around the world. Um, so this would not be out of the realm uh, of their M MO, their modus operandi, to conduct an attack on a highly symbolic location prior to holidays here in the United States. That's right. And it's important that we clarify that we don't know what the motivation Correct. may have been. It's just unclear. But as you point to the timing, this is one of the busiest travel days of the year, right before Thanksgiving, the location. This is a border security checkpoint that would have a high security presence from someone coming from Canada into the US. Um, and as you mentioned, there has already been an elevated uh, threat environment considering wars happening in the world and other incidents in the US that officials have said could be connected. Again, we don't know, but those, don't, those aren't encouraging um, details. Talk to me about the response at this point. From the footage, you can see a bunch of uh, police um, at the scene. You can see the vehicle. We don't know who the people were behind this, but who would be taking the lead and what's likely happening right now there in Niagara Falls? Yeah, one thing that jumped out at me was how, how quickly the uh, Joint Terrorism Task Force got involved here, run by the FBI, comprised of federal agencies, state and local agencies uh, in the surrounding area based out of, out of Buffalo. So what I can tell you is the FBI will initially take this lead through that mechanism. There are 56 JTTFs around the country. They all reflect uh, the communities and states that they uh, come from and operate in. Uh, so this will be no different. This is a very quick and coordinated way uh, for the FBI to lead the investigation and run down uh, any information that they need to, to include uh, working with other JTTFs around the country if there's any other threats that have been identified. Now, I will tell you, New York has been at a heightened uh, alert lately based on reports of increased chatter uh, hmm. amongst potential terrorist organizations, so much so that Governor Hochul just recently deployed additional state troopers uh, to be part of the JTTFs in New York, uh, Buffalo, New York City. So this is all very uh, interesting timing. The facts here, in my opinion and experience, uh, portray uh, that this doesn't look good. Uh, th this may very well uh, be confirmed to be an intentional act. And if that's the case, 
uh, as I've been calling for uh, in the past several months, uh, I think it needs to be reflected by the Department of Homeland Security that we are, in fact, at an elevated threat level here in this country. And the way they do that is through the National Terrorism Advisory System, a system that I helped design and implement back in 2011. I want to ask you more about that in a moment, but just to summarize for our viewers, we're following this breaking news event in Niagara Falls on the U.S.-Canadian border where two people um, are now dead after their vehicle went from Canada to the United States over uh, the Rainbow Bridge, um, crashed, um, and had an encounter with police. We also understand at this moment police are giving a press conference and giving some updates, so we're going to bring new information to our viewers as it comes in. Charles Marino, this is your area of expertise. Um, what I want to ask you is about the, the coordination between the Joint Terrorism Task Force led by the FBI here on the U.S. side and the Ontario Provincial Police, who've already released a video statement telling folks you can expect delays in the area. All the bridges in this area are closed. Buffalo Airport is screening vehicles. What is likely the communication between the two, considering Americans will want to know who these people were and where they came from? Well, the cooperation's at an excellent level. The, these are not relationships that are developed uh, during a crisis. These are long-lasting relationships on, on both sides of the border between U.S. and Canadian officials. The, the one thing that I would uh, caution against here, and I'm sure the FBI is talking to Canadian uh, officials about, as well as along our southern border out of Mexico, is uh, the possibility that this is not just a, a one-off, uh, but more of a, of a coordinated action, which is always a possibility. Um, so not only are they working to find out exactly what the cause of this was, uh, but if, in fact, they determine that it was a deliberate act, now you've got to also focus on, is this one of one or one of many? Uh, so now the job becomes much harder. Yep. Um, and just to confirm, you know, we've got all of our teams working their sources on this. As far as we understand, according to the U.S. Uh, government, it's too soon. Um, of course, this is unfolding just a few hours ago, too soon um, to call this an act of terrorism, but certainly the fact that these two people were in a vehicle. I mean, it's not just one lone wolf, which is a phrase that we commonly um, lean on whenever there's an odd incident. To have two people who were in the vehicle to be at a border checkpoint certainly sounds suspicious. Um, and again, we're waiting yeah. for new information, and we'll bring that to our viewers as soon as we get more. Can you talk to me about the increased chatter that you were referencing as we kind of weigh how likely it might be a terrorist attack. What what has been um, that recent chatter that uh, the FBI and others have detected? Yeah, well, the threats I previously spoke about, uh, both domestic and, and internationally, uh, have increased. And and look, actions that are taking place in the in the Middle East between Israel and Hamas and Hezbollah, terrorist organizations, uh, proxies of Iran, have a direct impact on our threat level. And, and that's what we're seeing. That, that's exactly how it's playing out. Uh, we are supporting, the United States is supporting our very close ally, Israel. Uh, and, and with that comes potential consequences to the homeland. Uh, and that is an increase in threats. Uh, now, this is in addition to paying attention to our domestic threats, things like homegrown violent extremism, for example, uh, where you may have people already in the United States that are very sympathetic uh, to the causes, um, to the ideologies of terrorist organizations like Hamas and Hezbollah. So this is a very complicated threat environment. Uh, it comes in very uh, diverse forms, uh, and the FBI and local authorities need to uh, to track all of these. Uh, but my sources tell me, and, and reports confirm, uh, that there has been increased chatter, and, and not just specific to New York, uh, but but to the United States in general. And, and I think that's what the FBI director meant last week when he was testifying before Congress, where he said the threat level was, was at a whole nother level. Um, that tells me he's very concerned. And, and, and the biggest concern, as he described it, and correctly so, are the unknown unknowns, right? Uh, that is, who's exactly been allowed to enter 
uh, the country. Uh, who has already been here? Uh, possibly uh, sleeper cell organizations, for example. Um, these are the concerns. These are the things that keep national security officials up at night. We're listening here to uh, the expertise of Charles uh, Marino, a former Secret Service special agent on this breaking story coming to us out of Niagara Falls on the U.S. side of its border with Canada after two individuals are dead um, following the vehicle they were in driving across the border to a border checkpoint. Um, it is unclear at this point what the motive was. A top official telling CBS News too soon to tell if this is terrorism. However, it does appear that this was a deliberate act. Charles, I also want to update our viewers that the White House is closely monitoring the situation and uh, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has also released a statement saying he's watching this, he's working with the U.S. Um, to figure out exactly what happened. And as you have just painted, the backdrop to this is an increased uh, um, threat environment with a higher num amount of chatter um, that uh, agents are measuring. And the Joint Terrorism Task Force, led by the FBI, is on the scene leading this effort. What likely is the next um, step in this, Charles? Obviously, you want to know who they were and why they did this. How do officials get those answers? Yeah, well, they'll, they'll start to work very quickly, again, through the JTTF. They'll start to uh, get the identifying uh, information uh, from the vehicle, for example, um, you know, there's some some good identification marks through uh, through the vehicle identification numbers uh, that are part of of things that may have stayed uh, intact. So they'll identify uh, the vehicle, uh, where it's from, was it stolen? Then they'll work on identifying the individuals in the vehicle, any known affiliations, uh, any previous threats. Uh, that may have been tied to this that they were currently investigating. And then there's the physical security of, of the United States. Uh, do the closures expand uh, across both our southern and northern borders? Uh, this all depends on if, one, if it's deliberate, and two, what the uh, what it's tied to, any organized groups, uh, or were these lone wolves, uh, as we, we call them, uh, and not tied to any other larger organizations, but just two individuals that had become uh, radicalized and attached to some ideology in general to carry out these attacks. Uh, and then if it's a larger threat, then, then they're going to have to work. Uh, with Homeland Security to determine what the next steps are uh, on our border. Uh, but again, uh, you know, the, the worst case scenario is is that they find this is uh, attached uh, to, if deliberate, to a, a wider um, plan here. Um, that, I think that's where officials' heads are right now. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot to do in the span of about two hours. I think this has just happened only a short time ago. Uh, maybe even less time, in fact. What then should we look for? Officials will be careful um, about what information and details they release to the public, so we may not get these answers um, in, in the short order here. Uh, the All crossings, though, in this western New York area are closed between Canada and right. the U.S. If the threat has been eliminated, if that's what this was, if they discover there's no larger plot, how likely might we see those crossings reopen? I mean, this is an extremely busy time yeah. of travel. Well, that's right. And and you just called the, the, the point that I was going to make here. It's a busy time of travel. And so now what law enforcement agencies, the position they find themselves in currently is that now you have an American public that needs to be communicated to. Uh, you have a lot of families planning to fly, already flying, traveling by car, traveling by train. Um, they're all hearing these reports, uh, and, and rightfully so, there, there's going to be a lot of concern and questions out there. Uh, so tied to the holiday season, uh, American public is going to want to hear exactly what is going on. Now, not that law enforcement officials should rush their job to meet the news cycle. That's not the way it works. Uh, they need to remain diligent, thorough, uh, and they need to get the answers. Um, but they're going to have to give the answers. Uh, and I think the first question that needs to be answered is, was this a deliberate attack, what we've been bouncing around here? All right, we're absorbing the expertise there. Former Secret Service Special Agent uh, Charles Marino on this breaking news event. Charles, thank you very much for your time.
We want to now uh, bring over former FBI agent Doug Coons, who joins us as well. Doug, uh, two individuals dead inside a vehicle that crossed from Canada into the United States in Niagara Falls. The FBI leading the Joint Terrorism Task Force's uh, investigation of all this. What is the FBI priority at this moment? I would have to believe uh, identifying who the subjects are or were, uh, where they came from, what their ideology is, that there's a lot to do right now. Uh, I think the the who, uh, the why is the most important, but you've also got the, the other questions to answer right now. Um, there's a lot of interviews to do. There's a lot of forensics to do. You've got a huge crime scene. Um, they've got their hands full right now, but uh, luckily, all field offices have a, a JPT up in place and they uh, investigate and hopefully um, they're putting all the wheels into motion to get the answers that we're talking about as quickly as possible. And because news like this is something that will worry so many people, not just those who are traveling in the region, but others who wonder if other international uh, checkpoints, airports, travel locations are safe, the FBI won't likely release everything they know. They will probably do the opposite, right? And, and release very little. So what should we expect to learn in these early hours after an incident like this? Because either way, whether it was terrorism, whether it was um, two individuals with, with a, a ax to bear, it's disturbing. So how soon might we know more when it comes to who was behind this? And I think that's that's a hard question to answer. We'll have yeah. to be patient as usual. The FBI typically is very cautious with releasing information. Uh, they don't want to compromise anything that's ongoing, let on how much they know about certain things, that if there's a larger network that they might be on to them and cause others involved to go into hiding. Uh, all speculation right now, but like you said, it's one of the busiest travel days of the year. Uh, people are going to be concerned, they're going to be afraid, and that's usually the point of terrorism is to cause fear and disruption. Uh, it seems like this was a relatively small device, uh, but the impact that this is going to make is still big because you've got the border being closed right now. Uh, traffic's going to be backed up for miles, economic impact. Um, all these things are are the often the uh, goal of these terrorist acts. And the fact that this is happening at a border crossing um, complicates or, or makes it more complicated how exactly as far as the agencies involved and the communication of the information they discover? It makes it a little more complicated. Uh, the Bureau already has a relationship with Canadian authorities. Um, there's actually a, a, an FBI office in, um, in Canada where they liaise with the local law enforcement to work on these things. They, they know each other ahead of time. Um, probably the Buffalo field office is responsible for that area and uh, some satellite offices will put their resources into that and hopefully answer these questions as, quick, as quickly as possible. Uh, so to move on to get these borders back open and traffic moving and, and the holidays um, going on schedule uh, with as little disruption as possible is, is the um, paramount here. We, you know, you don't, don't want to let terrorism um, disrupt your um, your way of life, and and that's the goal. So we, we want to get it resolved as quickly as possible. Uh, hold those responsible, accountable, and and uh, keep being diligent. Yeah, because you wonder, has the threat ended, and do officials have their arms around um, this danger? I can also share with you that. According to our Ed O'Keefe, uh, senior administration official, is describing this incident to CBS News as, quote, more than a freak accident, but we don't yet have details. I just want to share that with you, Doug, as we also are hearing from witnesses at the scene there in Niagara Falls near the border crossing where this car crashed and the two individuals uh, later died. We're not, it's not clear how. Let's listen to what this witness saw. Hello, and sir, were you on the bridge or what? No, I, we, my wife and I were walking down Main Street here, 
and uh, the car was coming flying back here like over 100 miles an hour we could hardly even see me it was going that quick there was a car in front of him he swerved around it and then it looked like he hit the fence and this uh, fire started and then all of a sudden he went up in the air and then it was a ball of fire like 30 40 feet high I've never seen anything like it it was really in incredible we were walking up this way yeah. yeah. And then describe it again. So okay. So we were walking up this. Oh, sorry. So we were walking up the road, and we seen this car coming down towards the border, and he was flying over 100 miles an hour. There was a car in front of him. He swerved out, went in front of the car, hit the fence, went flying up into the air. He hit. I think there was a elevation part. He went up into the air, and we just seen the fireball, and that's all we could see. It was just covered in smoke everywhere. So the car was coming from the U.S. into Canada? Canada? Yes, it was going towards Canada, yes. Okay, did it actually hit towards the bridge? Where was that elevated here? It, there was a fence there that fenced off around there. It looked like it hit part of the fence because it's all damaged, and then it went elevated up, and then it went up into the air, and then it was just a fireball and smoke everywhere. And... Uh, did you see officers like pulling weapons or doing anything like Not that? Not till later. I had never seen them pull a weapon. But I, it took about 10 minutes for, like the border police were there obviously, but it took about 10 minutes and all of a sudden there were just police everywhere. All right, did you hear any other noises or anything? We heard a big bang, yeah. Real loud bang and then, yeah. then you saw this car. And yeah, yeah, and we, I said there's no way that guy's going to stop. There's no way he can stop. He's just going too fast. You couldn't tell if it had what kind of license plates on it? No, I know, no, we couldn't, no. Well, how would you describe the car? Um, it looked like a Chrysler 300, but somebody told me it was a Bentley, but it was, there's similar cars in, in that, so, yeah. Okay. And he was swerving as he was going down this road here, All right. fishtailing. We've been listening, we were listening there to a witness share what he saw, and just a point of clarification, he mentioned that despite seeing the car driving fast, swerving around another vehicle and flying into the air, he said it was heading from the US into Canada. We understand at this point, the latest information is that the opposite as far as the direction was true, it was coming from Canada into the US, but these types of discrepancies can be common after a breaking news event when we're still gathering information. Uh, Doug Coons is still with us, former FBI agent. Uh, what do you make now of what's happened, knowing that the White House says this does not appear to be accidental, they need to know more, and that this witness certainly described something that sounds intentional. Right, and it, it, like you said, it's not uh, uncommon for witnesses to have different facts. Uh, you've got, a, as an investigator, in, uh, interview these people, listen, people see things uh, differently than others from a different angle. Um, so we'll have to sort, they'll have to sort all that out. Um, everything I had read prior to that witness was that the, the vehicle was coming from Canada into the United States. And so, you know, my natural questions were, what was, if it was an actual terrorist attack or um, um, planned attack, what was its actual target? I can't imagine that that's what they had planned to do was to swerve around the line of cars and, and set the thing off right there. Uh, did they get to the line and realize that they were likely to get caught panic and then try to swerve around it? Um, so a lot of witnesses to interview, um, a few people are going to see it differently than others. And it's, you know, they'll, they'll figure out what really happened shortly. I'm sure there's got to be, uh, security cameras at any kind of border station like that. So they'll see, they'll get license plates if the car was stolen, then, um, Right. If the car was stolen, uh, I'll have to figure out where it was stolen from and, and kind of backtrack that investigation. Um, again, identifying the subjects is um, probably priority. Uh, are they part of some sort of a bigger network? Are more incidents like these about to happen? So it's the prevention of anything else is um, a really big deal right now. That's uh, what they're working on doing among there's, there's so much to do on these kind of things it's right. really overwhelming when you're an investigator you've got to get organized you've got to set up a call center so that people with tips can call in and provide the information that they may have um and that's why we want to be so careful yeah. with so much early information some of the details may change as we find out more and as the professionals get in there and do their work. Just for our viewers' benefit, what we do know is that two people who were inside that vehicle coming from Canada to the US are now dead. 
after that incident at the border crossing. The White House is watching this. Uh, the uh, Canadian Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, says he's in communication with the U.S. over this incident. Um, and there is increased screening, we understand, of vehicles at the Buffalo Airport, which is not too far away. Um, Doug Coons, the former, our former FBI agent, no matter what the motivation was, folks will be traveling for Thanksgiving today, tomorrow, and then heading back over the weekend. Might we see, just because of this incident, an elevated security posture? almost as deterrence. Oh. I think back to 20 years ago, post 9-11, we used to have a color-coded threat level. Might we expect longer lines at airports and, and, and more intensive searches, perhaps? Absolutely. I think uh, everyone's going to have a, a even more. I mean, it was already heightened with everything that's going on in the world right now. But after this, even more so. It's that long lines, it's that traffic, uh, all that kind of stuff. All right, Doug Coons, we appreciate you connecting with us so quickly on this breaking news event. Thank you very much. We'll continue to stay in contact with you throughout the day. Here at CBS News, we will continue to follow these developments and we'll bring more for all of you at the top of the hour um, right here on CBS News.